Eagles and Shorts. And Surf and Scuba and Sand and Sailing and Soccer. Season's greetings and welcome to a brand new episode of Two Balls and a Mic, episode 200. 20. 220. Thank you. Sorry, it's uh, howdy, partners. It's currently 10 p.m. my time. Oh, okay. Text time. All right, partner. It's a Whataburger o'clock somewhere. Not here in San Diego, but. Dime <laughs> vaquero. Oh, man. Season's greeting. We're going to go ahead and get down to it we're gonna go ahead and talk san diego wave san diego wave <clears throat> excuse me tying louisville racing louisville Whoa. a revenge game for taylor corniak i was actually on the way to houston when i encountered a uh one of the coaches for san diego wave going early that's cool which is pretty dope but we're gonna go ahead and break that game film down that entire game we'll welcome our friend abe Cepeda. everybody love abe he gets the clicks he gets he gets the people going uh, we're also going to go ahead and preview the Orlando Pride coming, uh, going and facing, wait, facing Orlando Pride on the road, Florida, two back-to-back away games, and then back here at Snapdragon for later. We're going to also look at San Diego FC's number one signing, first signing of all time, Duran Faree, clean sheet for Orange County SC. You're going to break down some of that film and other SDFC news, as well as that supporters rally that they had, and some rumors of some more. U.S. players or more Mexicans coming I mean, to San Diego I, FC. I can give my two cents on that one, but we will we will definitely do that. And uh, everybody's favorite segment of Juggle Bonito, two balls and a mic, powered by San Diego Junto Football. You guys can see there. El juego bonito, goals, gaps, and greats. Abrupt ending. Oh, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> Sandals and shorts, indeed. Okay, um, how was Texas, man? <clears throat> it was all right. Economy sucks just because my size. Like, I go in and I make everybody's life easier. Um, but then, like, I'm sat like this for three hours. Just constrained like a little. <laughs> like, literally, if you can, if you made me into a rubber band ball of how tightly squeezed in I am, I'm like, I'm like Did you that. have an aisle, metal seat? Uh, windows, both windows? ways. Um, apparently... I, was, I booked the wrong flight. I was supposed to be business this whole time. <laughs> so, yeah. So You would have been more comfy. Yeah, potentially. I wouldn't have made the memories that I made watching WrestleMania on the way there and on the way back. <laughs> uh, mission was to go in Houston and um, work. Uh, and then in my everything closes at 10. It's weird. Houston was, was pretty interesting. Shout out. Very friendly people. Uh, everything closes at 10? I, I had about... 10 different Ubers, each one a different nationality, which was interesting. Um, That's cool. But yes, uh, my only goal uh, just recreationally was going to be um, to try Whataburger. To try. So I think this is why, why, why people are also here. They want, they want, they want. I think I'm a trusted voice, Chiba. I think so too. I mean, I, think I was keeping up with your I've, threats on Twitter. I've never really, you know, showcased that my. Um, your life <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah that's that's also true um but just i've never showcased anything that wasn't honesty on the podcast uh you know we're transparent we're sandy was number one soccer outlet so we, we kind of have to do that um but ultimately i, I wouldn't want people to be led astray by the ultimate debate of waterburger v in and out and i know this is why people tune in i know this is why people are like excited yeah, for two balls in a mic uh, that's why I um, came. that's the only reason i'm here no so uh, this is a medium and i don't have small hands and i asked for a medium and either. um you know when it went in texas uh you know they had every flavor but they had uh sweet tea and i i destroyed one of those sweets so my medicine and everything was out the window <laughs> like yolo uh, <laughs> literally it's the way um, it the hopefully i was i was banging on texas having a kaiser of some sort <laughs> um but yeah so it, it it was 
really good. I, I have an official Expense, ranking. Expense. <laughs> I have an absolutely. It's it's uh, fuel. So I get there and and I'm I'm greeted um, by a pretty abrasive um, spicy member. Oh, boy, let me get there. Uh, all right, so let's just get it from the top, right? I get the jalapeno water burger because I'm like, if I was here, Texas, living here, what would I normally get? Of course, I would get something with jalapenos. Yeah. It's it's a regular water burger with jalapenos. Cool, cool. dope, okay. awesome. 7.1, that's solid. That's a good burger. You know what? If I had to compare this to whatever uh, In-N-Out would have, In-N-Out, I think, is an 8.3. Um, okay, I like, like just a double, solid. double, yeah. double, double with 100%. chilies. 100%. Okay. So jalapeno water burger, uh, all right. The fries... Mm, okay the, they're they're they the, look okay the fries are for the next part the fries are for the next part which is a, of just a vehicle um a vessel of sorts uh to deliver what is honestly the best ketchup i've ever had in my life oh my gosh so there's fancy ketchup with sure that's fine it it's just really regular? good ketchup it's just really good ketchup but then there's this thing called spicy ketchup and it has like with jalapenos like jalapenos in it or like a sauce? Like, like it's just like I, I like it's a little kick. Nine point six. Really? Nine point six. If God I can bottle it. that and just like bring it. Bring it and oh, along and with they, barrels. So of, is that just a water burger thing or do they have spicy ketchup? I think everywhere? it's just a water burger thing. Maybe it's oh. everywhere. I don't know. But this is this is what I came in. Uh patty melt, excellent. Excellent. The sweet tea was all right. It was it, it was pretty okay. Excellent. Uh the conversations, the friends that we made along the way were uh, the better part of of that. So, uh, you know, if you want to just take a look and a gander at uh, what my adventure was, go ahead and check out underscore Tony Sanchez. This is this is something stark because the first thing and you'll and people here will and Abraham will also laugh and people will kind of get inside of of how my brain works. Um, my fat ass was not going to order an Uber to Whataburger. So what did Tony do? Tony ordered a Uber to go to a sports store next to the Whataburger so I could just walk. <laughs> Wait, get that out of the You're in Texas. You could have just done it. Hey, okay, no, nice. it's fine. It's fine. Um, what is interesting, just like the Mexico jersey, obviously it's Houston, so they have different merch. Yeah. Um, a lot of, um, this is the only soccer corner. The selection of, of, of cleats were actually superb. Nice. Uh, not a lot of indoor soccer shoes. Um, it was called Free Bullets. I mean, oh, covered, shit. covered. Right. Um, Academy Sports and, and Outdoor. It was, it was everything. H E B is everything. Cow, that, look at that, America. Yeah, I. Uh, you Facetime me when you were in the store. No, this and, is this is the Facetime. I actually, just cropped you out of it. <laughs> no, and they had a whole aisle of cowboy boots. Whole aisle of sporting cowboy boots, and it was it was crazy. it was a great time. I couldn't make it a Waffle House. My. My my tummy was not doing. Well. I like how someone asked, like, "How was it?" And you just replied with your thread. <laughs> yeah, here, yeah, just I'm, I'm not gonna bother. Uh, you H-E-B. got in the pool. I did get into the pool, and it was absolutely freezing, which makes sense for Texas. Like, it's not a heated pool. Why would yeah, yeah. Texas have a heated pool? Exactly. Um, okay. Last thing. About, last thing. Last this, thing. Yes. Last thing. Last thing. I needed to go get some Texas barbecue. Yeah. First time ever. Go to Truth Barbecue. I, I I talk. Did with, you check the reviews before? And I everything? check reviews. I check with Uber drivers. I check with everybody, and, and and there was two. I I just went on this one, um, and this is my plate. I got a little bit of everything, and I pulled and <laughs> I did the um. Oh, it's my first time having Texas barbecue. <laughs> I don't know what to what to get. Oh, you think I could get a free sample of the of the um tater tot uh, casserole? Which which one would you take, man? Tater tot casserole or uh, mac and cheese? Oh, that's a hard decision. I only got one, man. It's it's, it's my first time having Texas bar. I don't know when I'm gonna have it again. Oh, okay, Why here's not, an bro? extra sample. Because I because the collard greens were another uh, the 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 the, the, the Brussels, Brussels sprouts, sprouts were phenomenal. Uh, phenomenal. Yeah. Um, yeah, that shit looks good. That dude. is fantastic. Uh, again, just brisket, that, tremendous, oh, excellent. Um, Nine point three for the ribs. I asked for pulled pork, but I got ribs. At the end of the day, I, I wasn't complaining. Uh, pepper jack sausage was okay. Tasted like a point eight, like a chorizo type of thing. Okay. Uh, Brussels sprouts were fantastic, and then the mac and tater tots just a tie. Just if in Texas, I I, I highly, highly, highly recommend. Um, and one of my least favorite uh, reviewers actually, it was coincidence because I just looked it up. Um, 
And is this 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 fella here? Um, I don't know if let's see. Am I sharing this? No, you're not. No, I'm not. All right. So this is literally the last thing, and it's it's dumb. Um, seasons greetings to everybody in the chat here. Cute. First things first, we got the three meat plate. Starting off, we got the beef brisket. This is a fatty brisket. Look at how beautiful mm -hmm. this is. Mm -hmm. Damn. That, that damn was, was that you? Is exactly damn. what I said. I had no idea. Like I took that first bite, I was like, damn, damn, just damn, like oh, a religious amazing. experience. That's um, season's greetings. I am, I am well. I am back. Also, economy back class. The last literally corner seat on the airplane. Shout out United for having mediocre airlines um, sponsor <laughs> us. I guess. Um, but yeah, that that was that was Texas. That's, you can find everything on cool, there. Man. I tried to I tried to go watch an Astros game. There was there were away. I tried to watch Houston. There's no. I tried to watch the Houston Dash. Not there. Uh, Rockets. Not there. So no no sports for me. Um, changing lives. Uh, one seminar at a time. But all right. Um, oh, and I went to the NASA uh, Johnson Space Center. This is... Last last thing. <laughs> I snuck out during my lunch because I needed to make sure that I got something because my girl loves space. Okay. She loves it. So literally a mission in between my lunch. I left, paid it full admission, sped run the entire museum, took pictures, went to the gift shop and spent... Yeah, a lot. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> All right. Um, touch the moon. There is actually the moon. There's one of eight uh, moon rocks you can actually physically touch on Earth, and that's that's one of them. Wow, you touch the moon. I touch the moon. Um, crazy. I'll touch the hand. I'll touch the moon. Touch other stuff too. Um, like the brisket. Um, but yeah, so shout out to <laughs> shout out to NASA, I guess. To All NASA, right, sponsor um, us. <laughs> sponsor us. Yeah, let's go. Um, all, right. all right, back to football. Football. Back to soccer. Punto football. I'm glad you came back safe from Texas. Uh, San Diego missed you. San Diego football missed you. And the soccer community missed you and wished you a, a well trip. But we did have a soccer game. Did we? For San Diego Wave against Racing Louisville. But we're going to welcome in our good old pal, writer, Abraham Cepeda. Welcome in, Abraham. Whoa, how are you guys doing? I'm very jealous of the brisket. That looked really, really good. Oh, I know, dude. Damn. Like, you got to no. have some here. You're going to be so disappointed. I tried to bring you guys some. I legitimately did. It's okay. It wasn't it for was, you guys. It, it, but, like, I my 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 conference ended at, at, at 12. My flight was at 2. And so I Ubered there for 20 minutes and risked there being a line. There was a super big line. So I didn't have to get an Uber back there. Uh, apparently, whoever put in my flight ticket on the way there and back put my wrong birthday, so I made it onto the plane. Like, like literally, like Home Alone when they're all the families all running. Like that was me, just oh the size of an gosh. entire family, just walking and running <laughs> through the airport. Um, all right, so um, I fly over to Houston and and not I'm not gonna say the coach's name just because I don't want to burn him out. All right, there's obviously at the airport in Limburg Field. There's facilities. There's watering holes. It was pretty early in the morning. This coach, um, <clears throat> he uh, was sat down at one of these establishments, not not drinking at all, but just destroying some Phil's barbecue. I was like, wait, <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> it like yeah, like it, was like, it was like nine. Just take, just wolfing it down. I'm like, I'm lo I'm a little jealous. Uh, just and and talk to him a little bit. I'm like, hey, how's it going? We, rec we recognize each other, kind of like a what are you doing here? Like, um, <laughs> and you know, Louisville. yeah, no. So I, it was, it was early, right? Who's no, like, oh, you should have told like, him that I'm going to Louisville. No, Louisville. Louisville. Um, and he's like, yeah, no, like, uh, you know, I'm going to go out early, get some preparations done. So it's kind of interesting and cool. Just get that yeah. behind the scenes of, you know, some coaches leave early, just the, 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 the semantics of how, the, honestly, the that kind of makes works. sense. Cause they probably send someone, Hey, like you check us in for the hotel to when the players get yeah. there. Like we don't exactly. have to wait or anything. We just go straight to the rooms. Exactly. Cool. Um, so yeah, so um that was that game on Saturday. Abe Chiva. Um, I'll start with Abe. Um going into it, we knew it was a revenge game for Taylor Flint, formerly the artist formerly known as Taylor Corniak. Um did you, what what were we feeling going into this game? 
I mean, I genuinely don't think I would have cared as much about this revenge game until Casey Stoney made those comments about the competition thing. And yeah, when you hear that kind of conversation from a coach, especially talking about a former player, you, I think it justifiably makes you excited. Yeah, 100%. And I mean, that's part of the, I mean, when we had her on the show, right, Tony, where she just kind of brought that up and said, oh, you know, I, uh, if, if players don't want to, like, she brought up Corning and said, if players don't want to compete, I don't want them in my team. I thought it was very interesting. Point blank. Yeah, because yeah. Taylor Corning posted on Instagram and said, well, this is going to be fun. And that, I was like, okay, that's, that's, that's. And, and the devil emoji, too. Exactly. That was, that was the important part. If she said like, that, it's normal. But the devil emoji, that, that means something. Yeah. It's like, a, <laughs> nice. uh, so, so the question was, I mean, if she scores, will she celebrate, right? Uh, I think going into this game on paper, uh, you saw Orlando Pride and they had uh, nothing but ties on the on the season. I think three ties, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and and you kind of want to put San Diego Wave as a favorite over Orlando Pride, uh, uh, raising Louisville here. Mm -hmm. But you're coming off an international break. You're coming off from ten of your players being in, in international teams and coming on. Obviously, you're not going to be at a hundred percent. You have Naomi Girma out through an injury. So I don't know if you're going in too confidently into this game, but I thought they would play a lot better, Tony. Yeah, I mean, and with that, Naomi Gurma just sources at this point confirming that they are keeping her uh, with uh, supervisory eyes uh, through medical, just making sure she's going to be 100% to come back, which kind of tells you the depth that Casey knows that she has in the squad to say, yeah. you know what, I'm comfortable her not playing. We saw her on the bench, uh, you know, for the She Believes Cup, so... At a given, you know, if pushed to shove, I think she would have come on for for some reason if, if needed to. Uh, so she's not necessarily completely, completely out. But at the same time, uh, I think Wave has taken their precautions uh, going into it. But um, it was going to be an interesting match. And, and again, we talk about just like standings right now. Uh, you know, San Diego Wave's currently on seven out of 14. But it's a little bit early. Like some of these teams don't have don't even have four games to they so they can fill out the graphic you know how they fill it out like one two three four yeah. like draw 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 right um uh, win 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 uh, some teams i think it's only san diego and got them that haven't Gotham. played four games true because of true. the challenge cut true 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 they'll make they need to make that up uh quick um but yeah so you know that's kind of just considering in the back of your mind where these two teams stand and um i mean the game yeah no well i mean Looking at the starting lineup that we have here, uh, obviously the big thing that you see is just we have uh, Kennedy Wesley starting, yes. making her debut. And I was a little shocked. I'm not going to lie. You're putting in a rookie. You're trusting her in a weight match over Sierra Angie, who already proved herself kind of last season. You have her there, and you're going to trust uh, the rookie over a player that you kind of already seen. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm not going to lie, like, those were pretty ballsy move, and I think it paid off because I thought she had a great game. A incredibly gutsy move. I agree with you there. Um, but again, that kind of tells you the talent that it has been brought up through the draft, back-to-back uh, -back drafts with really, really good players. Uh, Kennedy Wesley, one of those players that I think Casey was even talking about, like, oh, she was there, we'll, we'll take her 100%. Um, but a strong, strong lineup. Uh, internationals peppered in there. Um, as strong as it gets without probably Germa. Yeah, I was honestly a little surprised that they had that many internationals playing, considering they had all just played very recently in there with their teams. But I mean, it's is about as ideal of a of a lineup that you can see from the wave. No, hundred percent. And I mean, I think there's players that I wish I would have been able to see in this game as well. But we also got a second debut later into this match with uh, Kimi as. Uh, Canio coming in mm -hmm. uh, in the second half. And I, I think it was a move that I didn't expect would happen. And I think, uh, I think Abe, you texted me like this game is screaming for Mel B if she wasn't injured. And I agree with you. But I, I, one thing we know about Casey Stoney is she's going to make it work with what she has. And she's always going to make sure that it's competitive and that the team is always in it. And I think that's exactly what she did with this lineup. Yeah. And they looked good that first half. They were really on top of it. They, created more chances, dominating possession, played that same game that they've been wanting to play. But like most other games, they weren't able to make anything happen in that final third. Yeah, no, I think something to highlight is just we go from a game at, 
at Snapdragon where we highlight Sofia Jakobson and she had a great game and mm-hmm. just completely dominating. And then you go to this game, she had so many chances and couldn't finish. I think there was one play where Jaden Shaw just kind of sets her up nicely. But oh, in this what one, what a pass! This is yeah, the first one of, this of is the, the first match. one that she has. And I mean, yeah. it, it was kind of like. I think there's simple finishes that you can have as a player. And I think Sofia Jacobson tries to like, <laughs> it's just Tony just yeah, hates when goalkeepers just do this. Uh, I mean, sometimes it's, you're going with the flow of it. This pass right here though. Excellent pass. This is one that I want to highlight. Like Jaden Shaw's vision is why I think she would be an excellent center attacking mid over a winger. A winger. Because the U.S. women's national team, they pretty much use her as a, as a 10. Mm-hmm. And uh, Twyla has said that. I mean, even answering a question like, hey, like, how come Jaden Shaw didn't try? Oh, we want to see. Uh, we have other players that play on the wings. We use Jaden Shaw more internally in the middle. I think when she's playing in that position, she shines because that vision she has of those through balls and shots outside the box, they're phenomenal. Yeah, just look at that free stream right there when you see the ball. Uh, again, for those on audio platforms, recommend <clears throat> on YouTube, it's still available. Uh, throughout the week or live here on Mondays, every Monday, except when the soccer's play. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, essentially, players taken out by one pass. I'm going to count uh, the defender behind uh, Shaw in that. But that's just you world have to class. Score that. That, that's world class. But yes, you do have to score that. Uh, this well, pass goes, yes. Isn't Maybe. that the reason why Jaden Shaw is on the wings? Because you don't really have anyone that can finish those kind of passes like that? Like, Jaden Shaw is, is yeah, amazing as a 10, Jayden but Shaw, she's the one that's going to score. Yeah, but without without Jaden Shaw doing that, who's going to set it up? You have to trust some of your other players to finish. Yeah, Jaden Shaw is probably one of the best finishers you have too, but she can't do it all. She can't pass. I mean, you technically can pass to yourself in soccer. but Admittedly, a tight angle. I, I would have been so pissed if I was Jaden Shaw or Sofia Jacobson. Sure. And I think my, my, my biggest thing is like it's not a better shot. If the goalkeeper stops it, the angle's very close. She's marking her first post. It's kind of it's difficult to kind of cross it. She goes for a shot, but my just gripe is that it goes directly to her. Um, kind of make make it a little bit more difficult for the goalkeeper. It would I'm be my the, only you, thing. You could shoot first post uh, at the top corner. You can shoot, try to curb it second post. Like, yeah, it's difficult, but you're a professional. Here's a, like, uh, another intervention here uh, by the goalkeeper. And, and San Diego Wave kept pressing. Like, they, yeah, they kept did. attacking the first half. Um, but the and, shots, no, no, they not, like, the, the shots were, like, really easy shots. Uh, I don't think they challenged the goalkeeper at all uh, for raising Louisville. And, I mean, overall, the offense just looked not what we're used to. It just mm-hmm. looked, it looked tired. It looked slow. It didn't look clinical at all. And Abe, I don't know if you want to agree, but I mean, it's just, it, it, it seemed off. Yeah, I, I wrote down that it looked lethargic. And that's just probably an international thing, I think, that mm-hmm. when you have that many players at the top needing minutes and also needing to kind of score, there there has to be like a give and take there. So you you just don't know what, what to expect from them, honestly, week in and week out. Like even the week prior, they hadn't scored all game with against the rain Mm -hmm. and not until the end were they able to get something off. And like, it was an issue all of last season too. Alex Morgan. We thought she was kind of like gassed and wasn't able to do anything. Kira Kuru could come on, changed a lot on the front end, but now we're kind of just seeing it again. They're not able to just make important finishing attacks. And I don't know if they need like another forward up there or something, but Something, something's got to change on this. Office. Yeah, because you know, here the, Maria Sanchez is on the market. The chances are getting created. That would be great. Uh, that's my mom's name. Um, <laughs> uh, Sofia Jakobson once again here with the left. And again, like we can fault to players for this or that, but like I think she just needs to take that extra, extra second, extra moment in front of goal and just finish and just get it on target. Uh, that's what she did in the first one, but I think she's trying to score a banger here. Just get it on target, create some chaos. There's enough uh, players that can probably rebound and have a good chance to to tap that in if need be. Um, but, we, you know, ultimately, the, this was kind of the I, way that this game was going to go. And, I mean, uh, ideally, yeah. right, like, you have you can have the philosophy, hey, if you win at home and tie on the road, you're pretty set for the season. Mm-hmm. Like, you you didn't lose a game. You tied on the road. That's always a win for a lot of teams. But I think Wave is one of those teams where you're like, no, we want to win every single game because we can win every single game. Uh 
other than that, I mean, yeah, the offense lacked, but the defense, on the other hand, looked solid still. And that's oh, yeah. a big plus without Naomi Gurma. Yeah, Kennedy Wesley looked like she's been playing all season long, which was very surprising to me. Like, she was on top of it, a great center back. Abby Dahlkemper looked solid again, too. Chris, Kristen Welch fall started that game. She looked good again. Kristen McNabb also was just killing it in the in that role. And I don't think the defense is ever going to be an issue with Casey Stoney, honestly. She's a defender. She knows how to get them in shape, knows how – they all know what they're doing in the defense and defensive end. Getting led by the one and only Kaylin Sheridan. Uh, Kaylin having a great game here. Uh, this is one of her e easy stops. Uh, you know, n n no stop is is easy when it has to. But uh, things got a little physical uh, overall, and the match kind of took a, a a turn where Louisville seemed to have the upper hand for a lot of it. Another save here into the hands of Sheridan. Um, but you know, San Diego Wave kept pressing on. Another shot by Sofia Jacobson. Um, that was and you know it that's kind of what we've seen so far this season where the finishing needs to be clinical for the San Diego Wave and if they do that they're going to go ahead and pass anybody who faces them at, at this point because it's it's stellar with the build up play that's happening uh with San Diego Wave Colaprico also getting involved with a with a good shot earlier um here uh, as you're going to see boom. oh that wasn't uh -huh. she had she, she did the exact same cut and shot and shot it actually earlier um but I mean, midfield, great defense, great goalkeeper, great. Yeah, I mean, got to shout out uh, McCaskill again. I mean, just putting in a shift again Told and you. just Told nonstop everybody. running. I think the physicality that she gives you is something. I mean, I asked Casey Sony at the end, I was like, hey, what does she give you that other players wouldn't give you? Mm -hmm. uh, but we'll, <laughs> we'll touch base on that as, as to why I really asked it. Uh, does it have to do I, with the person that just scored? Yes, it kind of has to. And I mean, at first you see, oh my God. Taylor Cornick. Who was it? Freaking score. Was it your hey, who put it on a uh, Taylor Flint? Um, me on on, our on Instagram. Who's oh me. Who's going me. to if she was going to celebrate? Yeah, that was me. That looked like a uh, celebration. That, to me. that a hundred percent was a celebration, and I think it was ruled offsides or was it a foul? It was ruled offsides. Okay, just because um, the moment the number nine right here. Oh, uh, gotcha. Gets She's it. in the way of Kayla she gets. Sheridan. Yep, not yeah. that. Honestly, not that out of think it, it would have changed it. That's anything. an offside, though. Based it's an offside, rule, 100%. Based yeah, on the 100%. Rule, it's an offside. It's unfortunate, but it's still a great header. And I mean, it kind of gives you a little taste of your own medicine where you're like, man, that's what she used to do for us for the most part. Uh, that's why we had her at San Diego Wave. Like, mm -hmm. to, you know, Tony, you described the best like that. Kaylin Sheridan, go kick. Uh, Korniak, La Pena, Lakaya Morgan, Morgan shoots, scores. Mm hmm. And in the and in the corner kick set pieces, like she had to be the difference maker. You're the tallest player on the field. You yeah. better win the ball every single time, and that's exactly what she did with San, against San Diego Wave. Luckily for the Wave, there was an offsides call. Yeah, and and luckily for the Wave, Kaylin Sheridan is also still in net, and um, you know that's probably Kaylin Sheridan had a great save towards the end. Mm -hmm. I think it's that oh. one, Tony. Yeah, I think it was 87th minute or something. Right. Yeah, Kaylin Sheridan's unreal. That was quite the save. She hadn't, that wasn't even a shot on goal in the first half. So she was kind of out of it for the first half. And then just, oh my gosh, what a save. Like just the reach, just securing it. I think Kaylin Sheridan was probably one of the best players uh, for Sandy Wave uh, in this game. <laughs> and you have Jack great, Harlow. Great job, whoever the cameraman was, just to capture, just. Hey, uh, NWSL viewers, Jack Harlow, please meet Kaylin Sheridan. <laughs> That's crazy. Um, yeah, so uh, ultimately, 0-0. Zero, zero, um, positive, you know, if it's just on a basic soccer manager mentality. Away game, point taken away, I'm happy. I mean, Casey yeah. Stoney wasn't too happy. I think she, she admitted that it wasn't their best performance. Mm -hmm. And I mean... Uh, I think we've all known Casey Sunny to be very honest when it comes to being critical of her team. Mm -hmm. And I mean, she admitted, it, you know, it wasn't the best performance, but I mean, shit, fuck it. We'll take the point. Like she said that. She, <laughs> that was <laughs> great. She said that. Uh, her kids, no. <laughs> no. The kids did not travel in this game. But I do want to highlight a question that was asked in the press conference by our very own Ape Cepeda. Did you, did you, um, in the, in the video they sent me? Is it the question? 
No, it's the whole thing. You're gonna have to find just, it. You, you have okay. a gift. That'd be cool. We, we we could go to wait, and I'll tell you what I asked. Basically, I didn't use the right wording. <laughs> I was definitely a little bit too long, but I basically wanted to ask Tacey Stoney what was going through her mind during the moment when Taylor Flint made that goal because she, we've all seen that goal before. We've all wondered, oh, is she going to do it against San Diego? She did do it against mm-hmm. San Diego, and we just want to know, like, are you going to commend your former athlete after you kind of talked crap about her but let let me let me throw it up and then we're gonna i see tom you added a question let's see it was more in the middle right middle it was towards the middle yeah yeah um that's that's, i guess after jack shout out uh women kick balls there's Dave. all right feel shaped completely right tonight in terms of our compactness so we allowed her to get on the wall and dictate too much so we have to solve that um, all things that uh, we are capable of doing better and will need to do better against Orlando. You can't let Marta in them sort of pockets. Um, so we're going to need to solve that. For sure. We'll appreciate your time and safe travels home. Thank you. Thanks, Abraham, Jack. we'll go next with you. Hey, Casey, could you speak a little bit about um, Caitlin Sheridan? You know, she had one of those amazing saves again this game. Can you talk a little bit about what you saw her, from her today? She's world-class, world-class. And I think we're... Very lucky to have her in goal. She's calm. She's assured. Um, at the time, she obviously keeps us in the game. Um, but listen, we should have been one or two out of sight in the first half with the chances that we had. So we shouldn't have even been in that position. But we're lucky we got her because she she gets us points. And uh, can you take us through that moment for Taylor Flint there? You know, it looked kind of like that stereotypical goal she had with the wave. Um, you, what was going through your mind in that in that time? Not a lot. <laughs> that's it. He just said, that's, Not a lot. <laughs> that's it. And you know, she did this to Chiva the other day when I think he was asking about Jaden Shaw. How about Jaden Shaw? She's not fit. Yeah. And I, and I think go ahead. Eric. It's gonna happen to everyone. Like <laughs> I know it is. I not a lot. <laughs> yeah. That's the thing. What was going through your mind in that in that time? That's the thing. For the no, people no. that don't know, us, us in the little media world, when it comes to San Diego Wave games or anything, that go in the press conference, it's a small group of us Casey's that are there every everybody. single time. So it's a small group of us that are there every single time. And so at this point, kind of Casey Tony and some players recognize us because we're the only ones there asking questions every single week, right? So whenever there's a question that someone asks and it's a very like short answer, or you can tell the coach or a player doesn't like your question, after we're, we're all just shooting the shit and we're like, damn, why'd you ask that? Like, what the heck? Ask her again. <laughs> ask her again. No, no, ask ask her her. Again. no, right now, ask her. Did did you like my qu- question, Casey Stoney? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I thought you were going to play the clip. Um, but... No. <laughs> but granted, Abraham, I was telling you and I'm telling to everyone, I wanted to ask about Taylor Cornick as well. Flint. Taylor Flint. I mean, yeah, yeah, I think it's like it's an interesting storyline. I think storylines are one of the more interesting things about sports. I mean, what the Padres Dodgers series was interesting because Will Smith was talking crap about Jerks Profar. This is the same thing. We're trying to get someone to talk about something. It's kind of our job as a media to help yeah. foster interesting mm-hmm. entertainment storylines. So I just wanted to ask about that, see what she thought about it. She didn't really have want to say much on it. Um, I should have been a little bit sneakier with the question like you were if we could go to, go to that to because that was I was the last one tony mm-hmm. i was very sad i was the last one yeah because his his question was a little bit sneakier and <laughs> used used better wording massive competitor and a winner you know and i think she brings that in every moment of the game and i want to ask when mckenzie donia came in for alex morgan <laughs> uh, before that uh, before, before that, that? Okay, before cool. that yeah. so you're already a star yeah. It's already a longer answer than, you know, hey, babe. <laughs> what up with Alejandro? Hey, Casey, thank you for your time. Can you speak a little bit about McCaskill's physicality and what she gives you as a 10 that maybe previous players wouldn't give you? She gives us like energy and ability to carry the ball and run beyond and spark the attack a little bit. I thought she, I thought she got fouled a lot tonight and didn't get a lot. Um, so that was unfortunate, but she's she's a massive competitor and a winner, you know, and I think she brings that in every moment of the game. You know, it's crazy. and I want to ask when uh, Taylor Flint or Cornick at the time would wave, would 
not get called on fouls because of her size and how like tall she is and stronger than other players. And then every time she like pushed someone, she would get called a foul. But it's it's funny. And I mean, I just really want the only reason I worded like that was because of Abe's answer. Uh, then I I followed up with, hey, Mackenzie Donia kept the captain armband after she subbed on for Alex Morgan. I You're thought about that was to ask the question. And Mackenzie Donia came in for Alex Morgan. She kept the captain armband. Was that intentional or was that just just keep it? It doesn't matter. <laughs> I I didn't see what happened there, so I assume it was just handed straight over. Cool. I was just. Curious. Curious. I, was I think we apply a little bit too yeah. much importance to this captain arm captain's armband thing. I think we it want it to be right? a little bit cooler, but it's but important. Yeah, that. Stereotypical goal she had with the wave. Um, she, what was going through your mind in that in that time? Not a lot. <laughs> uh, not a lot, Abe. Um, <laughs> thank you, Casey Stoney, for your time here at San Diego. Casey, Open. how many how many goals did the wave score? Oh, come on, play. Wow. I hey man, you, you really, I'm on good standing with you two in that time. On oh, great standing. No. What are you talking about? A lot. No, oh, Casey, are you okay? Are we, uh... You had to clip that out, and we had to be able to use that. Okay. Not a lot. Not, not a lot. lot. <laughs> <laughs> not a lot. Uh, but nah, good stuff, Abe. Uh, as always, uh, Tony couldn't make the press conference. Uh, he was jet lagged from Texas. Yeah, uh, oh, yeah. Real quick, before before we finish up, Kimi Escaño um, coming oh, yeah. on. Yes, yes, yes. We have to talk about that. So, yeah, so 16 year old, fourth mm -hmm. youngest player to make an appearance in an NWSL match. Um, she yeah. looked pretty solid out there in the midfield. Came in on, came on for um, Daniel Colaprico, and I was honestly surprised. An away game to get your first professional start for a 16 year old is kind of challenging, and she was able to be calm and present in that moment. Yeah, and again, just the level of, of players that are incoming, either from the drafts or just getting uh, scouted um, at, at a young age, is. is you know, a testament to the scouting network and prowess of Casey Stoney to be able to recognize talent and, and bring them in and know exactly when to when to put them uh, into the match. So, um, I mean, she got fouled too, and I, uh, Abe, you kind of took well, well right? That uh, Hannah Lundsvig uh, just kind of like pushes the player, gets the yellow card for protecting Kimi, and I mean, it it, it kind of shows the culture of that team, right? Where you're going to have each other's back. I I was just talking to you guys about that, right? Like, I wish I could see this more in the NWSL where players are pushing each other and and they're getting aggressive and they're just saying <laughs> no, like I mean, no, like set up get like get over Valencia. <laughs> no, but it, it's it's part of the game where it, it's a competition and I mean you're not always going to be friends. Yes, after the game you can be friends and everything, but I mean it's kind of like when Kobe Bryant or Michael Jordan will talk like playing with friends in the international teams or anything. No, that's you're not my friend right now. You're you're literally in the other team. Yeah, I, I think it's the fun part about sports when you see that competitiveness. It's where we're allowed to kind of let out that aggression and seeing Hannah Lundvis kind of bring that out. She came on as a sub in that game and kind of bring that out after. I, I don't remember which player on Louisville was doing it, but from the floor, kind of trying to reach out for the ball with the legs, fouling Escaño there. And then just an extra little shove, definitely unnecessary shove, definitely worth the yellow card. But um, it was it was really surprising to see because it was really late in the game at that point too it's just part of the game i mean it's good. when there's an altercation between players and then everyone gets involved it's just it shows how much they care el día que haga madrazos en esta liga va a ser mi liga favorita and i'm not condoning violence but yeah you are <laughs> <laughs> you're not it's fine i'm not don't revoke it um but yeah uh san diego wave is going to be heading on the road again back to back road games uh, this Friday against Orlando Pride. Orlando, Orlando Pride has one win, three draws. One of the only two, un oh, no, one of the few undefeated teams left in the league. Mm -hmm. uh, gentlemen, what do we think about this one? I like this as a game for uh, Alex Morgan to, you know, bounce back. You know, to oh, play against a former, former team. team. Um, has some good pals there. It's going to bring out the best out of this squad, and uh, hopefully a they're able to, you know, capitalize in the last in the final attacking third. Um, and, and I think that's going to be the key to to get at least a point out of this, if not a victory. 
I think that if you come back with uh, four points overall after two matches away, Wave will be rather content. Sure, if you take two away, that's fine. But uh, either way, I think it's going to be an interesting match. I, I think Wave's going to want to take this one. I'll, I'll, I'll select Wave for this one. Abe? Uh, yeah, I'll take Wave on this one too. I mean, going unbeaten in four matches is pretty hard, but the Wave are very good defensively. They will probably figure it out offensively, especially short week. It's an away game Friday night. I think they'll be ready. A lot of Friday night games so far at the beginning of the season, Amazon Prime. It's going to be good quality broadcast, fun to watch. I mean, I think even Casey Stoney mentioned when she was talking to Jackie about Marta. It's always an issue facing off against Orlando. But, I mean, San Diego's still primed to make the playoffs and make a run into the final this year. Yeah, it's going to be a good matchup. And I think this is what the NWSL is proposing now and, and you know, expanding but not just expanding for the sake of expanding, but having good matchups is is really a, been a focal point of the growth of this league. And I think uh, between this this road game and then coming back home and facing uh, Bay FC, uh, that's going to be a, a good. Uh, that's going to be fun. That's going to be a really fun yeah. match and cool international clashes there. Yeah. Well, uh, it's unfor- Rachel Hill and Scarlett Gambaros were out for their last match, though. So let's hope they're they're off the injury list by then because yeah, that'll. Scarlett. Scarlet got carted off, uh, well, subbed off from an injury with Mexico <laughs> via car. And it, it's just she gets injured when she goes with the selection. Uh, so they might put a hold on that until she gets healthy again. But yeah, no, I do agree with you guys. I think Wave has what it takes to take this one. I mean, you've had three clean sheets already mm-hmm. this season, like right, including the Challenge Cup, but only two goals conceded in three games, and one of them was literally in one game so uh i do think wave can pull this off i can see them getting another clean sheet winning this game two nothing uh, i think alex morgan also gets on the score sheet here absolutely all right uh anything else sandy wave um gentlemen i know there's gonna be what's the availability this week i think i'll look wednesday casey I think, stoney we're not sure yeah. which player yet <sighs> i'll try i'll try i'll try to fix what you guys broke no, Jesus. I'll try to have time to see if I can log on. I'm gonna be in Palm Springs at a work conference. Oh, so no, you're, it's your turn. It's, it's your turn to be at Not conference. Texas. No, it's all. It's all respect with with us and Casey Stoney. You know, we oh, she, she's allowed to be annoyed at us if if we get annoyed at coaching decisions that that are made. So it's always good to have a little bit of te- intensity between media and coach. I think. <laughs> are you gonna do it again? Come on, don't don't. No, it's not. Um, don't need to do it. I, I really don't think... Uh, damn it. I lost it. I really don't think that we have of time. Uh, all right. Abe. <laughs> Sick new setup. Yeah. People are commenting. Loving it. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah. Um, check everything out. San Diego Punto Football. Uh, anything coming down the pipeline for you, writing-wise? Um, writing rise, I think I'm going to have a preview on this Orlando game. I'm going to look more into Orlando, what they have in the, in the game plans for San Diego. I think that we've seen a lot of matches between these two and I mean, it'll be another good game. Hard. I, it's, it's soccer, you know, it's all, it's all the same old, same old. Exactly. Exactly. All right, Abe, I'm going to put you away in the pocket. You can chill. You can provide. Do whatever you'd like. Thank you, Abe, forever. At Abe under Cepeda on the X machine. And Santiago Punto Football. Just check check them out. Check them out. Um, all right. Uh, with that said, we're going to go ahead and transition over now into some San Diego FC. SDFC, San Diego's upcoming MLS team um, here in 2025. Some moves have been done. There's rumors um, before, because we will be uh, getting into Duran watch Duran Farid's first signing for San Diego FC, uh, getting a clean sheet for Orange County. Uh, we'll get to that in a bit, but there's a lot of talk and a lot of rumors yeah, happening is. about, uh, you know, who's going to lead this team. Who's going to be the, the players going to be the big bombazo. Who's going to be this big signing. And uh, it, it's, it's, it's an interesting place to be because I, I I'm seeing just different people. And I think you've mentioned it too. And, um, 
just getting asked, and, and I know people who watch this who are the soccer guy or soccer girl or soccer person mm -hmm. in their friend group is the one that's being asked. So like, oh, so Hugo Sanchez or like, hey, who's <laughs> who's this like SDFC team? Like... Who's this new MLS team going to sign? Yeah. Are they going to sign Ronaldo? Oh, I heard Ronaldo because they want Ronaldo in the West and then Messi in the East. Do, do you get? Blah, blah, I mean, blah, blah, do you blah, get blah, tired blah, blah. when people ask you and they're like, hey, man, it's be so sick. I don't get tired of it. No, it's just interesting just hearing where people's headspace is. Yeah. And where people are like, because again, we are surrounded by a lot of different individuals who either are incredibly involved in the SDFC and and know and and are working incredibly hard to make this as best of a product and as best of a team as it can possibly be. And, you know, they're trying to make it as world class as it can be. But then on the other side, there's like fans who are not a fan of the MLS, fans who don't necessarily like or follow the MLS who are like, uh, you know, they're, they're a little bit more realistic of that global scale. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, in, in talks of like, Oh, is is because I was asked because, Oh, like, who's your source about like, yo, don't worry about it. It's, 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 it's okay. <laughs> it's, it's a source for a reason. Um, but it wouldn't make sense for this world-class established Academy team to have this much investment in the philosophy of play of right to dream and all this, and then just bring a random coach from Mexico just for the sale that hasn't coaching years that hasn't coaching years or Piojo who has, who's having his worst, uh, you know, coaching stint in, yeah. in his history. Like it just doesn't, and you can put any big coach there, and, all and the honestly, relationships that, uh, yeah. In all honesty, a lot of this thing that comes up and it, it, if you see it from other people or other accounts or anything, a lot of things is, is going to be clickbait. It's going to be uh, for people to engage. And you know what? I wouldn't be surprised if it's also MLS people sending stuff 100%. saying, hey, yeah. let's start hyping some word about San Diego FC. And hey, Conejito Brizuela is going to leave Chivas and come to SDFC, a 33-year-old Mexican winger that has hardly had any caps for Mexico. Mm -hmm. It's it. He's only known if you're a Chivas supporter. Other than that, like he played in Toluca, had a great time in Toluca, had a great, has, a, has had a great career with Chivas. Other than that, who knows who Conejito is? Like the post says, oh, they're trying to gauge and win over the Mexican following. You're not going to bring Conejito. Uh, again, like it's it, people who are not in here who are opinionating on, oh, well, this is the way that the blah, 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 blah. Which uh, it, it can be an arm, and, and you know you, you do have uh, the movements on a Mexican sense of uh, getting a Mexican sporting director. You know, moving yeah. in, in those directions to meet those uh, two. It'd be really interesting to have SDFC be that team that says, you know what, we're going to have a basis of right to dream. We're going to have some MLS because they have to. Uh, some MLS uh, players who know how to win in this league. Mm -hmm. And then we'll sprinkle in some Chivas and America players. So it brings the both together of the, like, I can totally see yeah, no, that no, being a mentality. hundred percent. I can see it. And but we're just being ridiculous with some of these. Yeah. Conejito Brizuela. Like there's absolutely like no link, no correlation to it. Like there's no connections. I mean, honestly, you bring a bigger following trying to bring Alexis Vega. Mm -hmm. A very controversial player right now that bro, likes to party Mar or anything. Marco like that. Fabian is playing an empire, bro. Like, Marco Fabian, who's gonna come out in a dating <laughs> reality show. That, I think that was part of his contract. Yeah, no, it's, it's it's very interesting what Marco Fabian is up to. <laughs> that, is, that is wild. Um, but and let me preface this right. Like when we put something on our on our feed and we say rumors or sources or this and this and this, this is at face value. We've built a relationship with people across soccer, people across San Diego sports, people across just in general and. For the most part, I'd like to think that we've been on top of it. Have there been? I can point to two uh, where I was like, yeah, no, wrong. Um, but just like with anything, right? Yeah. If there's new input that comes in, of course, I need to change my perspective because there's new information coming in. Mm -hmm. I'd be a fool and an idiot to stay stagnant once I hear new things coming. Oh, that's not going to happen. Oh, yeah, yeah, at, this sure. point, at this point, at this point, Hugo happen. Sanchez, Pio Herrera, uh, Conejito Brizuela, um, even Guillermo Ochoa are just like they're a stretch. It's this a stretch. is this is a stretch. This is the information that we have presently. It's information, but that can change. Is it a possibility? It's a definitely yes, a possibility. It can. It can. 100%. Yes, it can because they're coaches. They can get hired as a coach. They're players. They can get traded or bought or anything like that. So mm -hmm. it's a possibility. The chances of that happening are very unlikely. And if it does, 
okay, how is this going to work? Like if you decide to go that way and you start making those decisions, then we have to know, okay, well, you all talk about your academy. Mm -hmm. Why is it that now you're going into this direction? Yeah. Yeah. Because maybe now you're realizing your academy project is not going to work out until maybe two or three more years until everything's settled. Mm -hmm. You got to field some players. You can't just field out of, out of MLS talent. You got to bring outside talent. Yeah. It, it, but may I yes. suggest before yes. you bring in just any Mexican player from Chivas or anything like that, do a little homework. Obviously, they are. Obviously, they will. Mm hmm. But, but bring people that are also going to compete in the field and bring people that are going to sell seats. That's the disconnect. I think that's the disconnect just between everybody who's having an opinion, who's who knows this league, people who are MLS fans, people who are... We're, we're seeing it front and center, right? Mm -hmm. With uh, Messi going over to Monterrey. That team, Inter Miami, is supposed to be a world beater, a world contender. They're uh, and, and they're... On any given match, any team can lose. And you know what? Monterrey got the better of them three to one. It wasn't even close. It was, it, it was, yeah, it was absolute destruction. Is that really going to tell you what the level of the MLS and, and Liga Mekis is as a whole? Not really, but on that particular day, they beat the best in the world. They beat current reigning defending World Cup winner, Lionel Messi, uh, who is the golden boy of the MLS. This team, the Inter Miami team, is the golden people, golden boys of the MLS. They're supposed to be the top of the top, right? Yeah. But then they go over to Monterrey and they lose. You're kind of like, well, <laughs> is Monterrey that good? No, it's and just then, like, this is reality. Thing. And that's things. the thing, right? Monterrey, I mean, there's, you follow the logic home. If you were to follow the logic, oh, like, Inter Miami has to be the best MLS team. Oh, Monterrey just be Inter Miami. Damn, Monterrey is better than any MLS team. Chivas just be Monterrey. Oh my God, Chivas is better than Messi. Ah, like, let me let me let me let me <laughs> let me let me do another one. Okay. Monterrey tied against Cholos, oh, meaning that man. Monterrey is equal to Mon to Cholos, which is over Messi. So oh, currently, wow. if you want to watch a product that's better than Lionel Messi, go watch Cholos. Go watch some Cholos, <laughs> <laughs> who just won their first game of the season against Juarez yesterday. Shout out one with zero. their last minute uh, winner. Uh, but yeah, man, those, those rumors, I mean, they're getting a little out of hand. I I, I enjoy watching them. It, it's interesting. Uh, and at the end of the day, posting about it. It is for the clicks, and I mean, props mm -hmm. to anyone that wants to share them. That's 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 your call. And, but and, I mean, and we're in that we're in that game too. hundred percent. We're in that game 100%. too. hundred percent. And I think we're being cautious with what we put based on what we've actually known, because these, we've had conversations in the yeah. past recently about things that are actually going to be happening down the line, and people who are they're actually going to be looking for. But it, it it's it, it serves nobody if if we just kind of start. Just throwing stuff out. Cause wait, we can grab the phone and tweet right now. As the rumor, SDFC wants to sign Kevin Alvarez from America, the 23 year old star boy that signed from uh, Pachuca that was linked to go to European clubs, Ajax and this and that. Like, oh, Ajax and Kevin. Too. And, and boom, and that that would attract people, and they were like, oh shit, Kevin Alvarez, like. It would, it would, it, it would generate clicks. Um, 100%, but that's I mean, not, we're, that's, we're not in that business, so. Those tres. Um. But yeah, well, was there something else? Uh, yeah, shout out SDFC. to everyone that showed out to the supporters rally. Yes. Uh, I personally didn't make it out because uh, I'm strictly media. So okay. it's fine. Uh, yeah. And people I, I had have, a great time out there. Yeah. People had a great time it, looked out there. Cool. it looked cool. And I think it's great for the community. Shout out to Jerry Jimenez. Uh, big part of the reason that it together. events happen. So uh, I think a lot of people enjoyed it. The post looked great. The community, like supporters group working together. Hopefully it works out for everyone. Uh, big shout out to the Riptides. Yeah, the Riptides Chavos. releasing a, a, a kit. And not only that, they actually had a really cool initiative and partnership uh, coming on through. Let me click through some of these pictures just to, um, you know, just give it the actual title. And uh, yeah, so it's the in collaboration with we uh, Matic made it. Matic made it. Um, Riptides would like to announce formal partnership with Barrio uh, Logan uh, College Institute. Uh, it's a goal to support the soccer program of El Cajon Facility as well as to bring awareness to this amazing program. Um, great stuff that's happening. Partnership with the Riptides, Hopdominus, and um, Omat Omatic, Omatic, or Matic. No, <laughs> Say Matic the player, yeah. I know. Um, <laughs> and eventually, just shout out uh, to everything that's being done in the community. Um, the locals still out there. Chavos, Fronteras Ultra still out there. 18th uh the dago boys out there like it, it, it's coming together and 
I, I, there was an interesting conversation that I had with somebody just with knowledge as far as like, hey, like this supporter section is going to be filled regardless. It's going to be filled regardless the first couple of games across the seasons and whatever. Is it going to be 100% Support. chance, fanting, chant, uh, chance, fan, fans, chanting, supporters, uh, La Barra? Probably not. Probably not. But I, I think that... The, People are realizing that and are, and are honing on what's there. The growth is still happening, and it's going to be a matter of those groups doing it, doing their part. Um, and I think they are. They're they're taking um, they're taking steps. Every single group that I've seen has had growth recently, and, and they're collaborating and they're coming together at soccer games, mm -hmm. uh, having a fun time out there. So um, the movement's happening. So good luck to everybody involved in that. It seemed like it was fun out there. Um, but yeah, yeah. Um, I think that's what we have for SDFC. Uh, there was a couple of other things that we can touch on, but we'll move that over to next week. But with that, I want to get to... Uh, you work hard on this. It took me 25 minutes. <laughs> Duran uh, Watch. Duran Watch. So Duran Watch, as you know, is a um, goalkeeper, 17-year-old goalkeeper, first SDFC signing, loaned out to USL Championship side, Orange County FC, former uh, rival of his with Sandy Loyal um former champions uh, along with teammate Thomas Among um but that we had we had conflicting in club uh discussions as far as uh the potential of him starting or not starting we had sources letting us know that hey he might he may get a start yeah, our, um and I then mean, what we were told pretty much is hey uh what's the start is shuttler yeah so, oh but we we're getting ahead of ourselves oh, okay because again, this is a segment to watch. Duran Watch. Shout out to Duran Free, who, you know, former guest of San Diego uh, Punto Football. We're going to try to get him on here soon. Um, but with that came a, high, a new highlight package that I can use and make a shitty video. But it's not shitty because he, he, it, it's just me, my quality of it. But it's just, it's all the reverence. So, uh, Duran Watch, guys. That's the dumbest thing I've ever done. Uh, Duran Watch. Um, um, pretty much what sources <laughs> confirmed is that starting goalkeeper Shuttler hadn't trained all week. So that kind of is an indication, okay, this player is not match fit. So yeah. there's a chance Duran gets a starting position and is his official debut with Orange County in the USL. Yeah, and, and so even, even the official lineup card that the uh, commentary team got uh, for the match um, had a had the wrong names because uh, they kept calling Duran Shuttler for the first couple minutes uh, of this matchup. So look, Danny, I can pull it up right now for you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, boy. Let me see, boy. Let me see, boy. So this is a starting lineup that Orange County posted on Twitter. Oh, they even posted it. Uh, oh, wow. So it had Shuttler on there. Mm -hmm. And then essentially, they ended up post putting this picture of that's, the starting 11. That's not Shuttler. That's Duran that's Faree. The, that's my boy, Duran Faree. Um, so congratulations getting your first uh USL uh championship start this season and clean sheet and clean sheet. Uh, we're, let's just look at some of this. I missed did you, USL. Wait, wait, wait. Yes, did, did you say first start in the USL or with Orange County, right? First start in the USL this season. This season, got it. Okay, cool. I miss USL. The highlights, the highlights. Oh, man, this is the first time this season that we show USL highlights. Um, but yeah, no, so uh, <laughs> I don't even want to go through all of these because some, some, some of the highlights, again, I forgot they show highlights that are in the package lights. that are literally just a pass yeah, or literally just a goof. Like you could have changed this already. This did, I, I see no highlight here. Um, first 25 seconds of the game. Come on now, Tony. <laughs> Let's see. Um, pa, 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 pa. So, yeah. So, then eventually there's going to be a, a chance here for um, former champions of the USL Championship uh, and rivals of also of San Diego Loyal, uh, San Antonio FC, featuring players like PC. Well, both of these teams are current uh, past champions and just rivals of former San Diego Loyal. So, here's a point blank shot. 
Lucas, I, a fantastic save by Duran. You were telling me before we started that that's a difficult uh, save to make, and you were saying something about Duran just being fundamentally a great goalkeeper. So, like, there's a reason why Duran Faree is considered to be a phenom, right? And people can look at him and look at his style, and, that, and sometimes I don't think people have seen enough film of Duran to realize like how good he actually is. You know, in terms of just a pure goalkeeping sense, we see somebody like Coque Vegas, and we're impressed with his looks, uh, with his play style, which is extravagant and different. He's fantastic with his legs, but as a as a pure goalkeeper, Duran was and and is a little bit better just in fundamentals, right? So this is a, a direct shot. Um, and, and usually when it comes at you this fast, you can't really react. One of the things is that Duran reacts perfectly, uh, to this so much so that at the end of it, usually what happens is that goalkeepers go here and then try to save it with their legs just as they can't react that fast. Duran is so young, spry and fundamentally sound that he knows that on a fundamental basis, he needs to get down there. To get down there is incredibly difficult. The athletic maneuvering that he has to do is is challenging, and he gets down there and stops that laying down. Like it's just a small little detail there where I'm like, good, like that, like Duran. Oh my god, like that's that's mm -hmm. a really good world class goalkeeping mentality to have and to be able to execute it um, is another thing. So a, a good first stop there. Uh, First good real stop. Um, and then, you know, as the game continues on, he will have a couple more um, commentary right here. Well, he got his name right. What a spot there from and honestly, Tender. just watching this and just, just on what we used to see, he looks more confident. He looks more secure on mm -hmm. that on that goal. I think even just getting that contract from SDFC, Mm -hmm. As a player, as a young player, it gives you that confidence boost where you're like, damn, like I, I they think I'm good enough. Like I have to be this good. So then you start playing a little uh, better. You go to the USL and you're like, well, next season I'm going to be in the MLS. So I better freaking shine every single time I get on this field. And I mean, a clean sheet against San Antonio, it's not an easy thing to do. Yeah, knowing exactly the prowess of, of San Antonio, what they're able to do. Uh, at home, the pressure's on. It was a really good performance by Duran. Uh, there is one more stop and save, and it's going to be courtesy here in a bit of uh, terrible soccer, uh, terrible San Diego FC memes. So shout out to them. Um, I'm going to throw it up right here. This chance there is oof. the reaction. I hope somebody got a good picture of that because that's a that's a really good save sprawling out and and being able to deflect that is again super difficult um as you're gonna see here this ball it, it comes right at him there's no contact he's ready for there to be yeah. contact just so he's ready at every single point that he can possibly be at um but then just to still be able to get yeah. down there is is super difficult so a, this is my favorite stop that he's one of my favorite stops that he's done. It's just it's aesthetically it's, it's looks just, great. It's just very difficult, right? Because I mean, you have to be ready for a header. If a header goes the other direction, you have to be ready to die. So, I mean, I agree. It's definitely a difficult save. So shout out to Rand Faree. And uh, with that, we're going to go ahead and follow him. Uh, Orange County SC do have two away matches, but they come back to Orange County uh, to face Louisville uh, FC um back at home if you want tickets for that we can provide tickets so if you want tickets and we want to go have a chance to see duran for you just want to go see orange county fc let us know right now open call uh if you want to go ahead and watch that let us know hit us up in the dms san diego punto football san diego dot football we'll hook you up with some tickets um and you know go have a great time it's a great soccer venue it's a great soccer part it's a great time over on orange county um so we have good connections over there so just let us know We'll get you hooked up with that. No questions about it. Just just want to give Coque Vegas a shout out. I mean, hopefully he's back from injury soon. Yeah. He got injured against the Monterey match. Mm. Uh, got subbed off, so he hasn't played since that second game of the season. So hopefully he's back soon. Hola, ¿qué tal? Soy Coque Vegas.
<laughs> so You're so dumb. proud of it. Uh, it, it, it no. Um, but all right. Uh, with that, that has been Duran Watch and everything that we have here. But the final segment, <laughs> nope, it's not year yeah, and A. I know. Uh, not definitely that. It's going to be... El Juego Bonito, Jogo Bonito, Goals, Gaffs, and Greats. The beautiful game. Um, all right, so Chiba, you've provided some yeah, of these links. so I'm not going to lie to you guys. I mean, uh, the goal I wanted, I checked it again, and it was months old already. So uh, Rosales there, there was, no, oh. there was this goal that had just happened a couple hours ago from the Liga uh, MX Femenil mm -hmm. from Pachuca. I thought it was a banger. I saw mm -hmm. it on the feed right now. I saw Cesar H football sharing, and I was like, "Well, okay, that's that's a goal of the week for sure." I mean, unless you have something else, uh, goal Cole Palmer. I mean, if you want to go with that, we can just show the Man City against Real Madrid goals. Like, if nah, you go with that, we're so. fine. <laughs> you know what? It's okay. It's okay to not have a goal of the week. Nothing was worthy. Nothing was sent. There's two gaffes. There is two gaffes, so that's bonus. Uh, so let's go to one. Uh, this is the first gap. I mean, it has to be with Tony's yeah. talker team. Chelsea, I mean, we tried to stay local, but when s ridiculous stuff like this happens worldwide, we have to cover it. And Chelsea were up 4 nothing already. Cole Palmer was already on a hat trick. And the players are fighting over who takes a penalty. Pochettino, this Chelsea head coach, goes to say after Cole, Cole Palmer is a, our penalty taker. Damn right he is. Uh, w really wish he would have said that uh, in before the game. Uh, no, right here. <laughs> <laughs> like just like looking like. Mm, mm. Uh, so I mean, like that's an embarrassed ridiculous. mom at the supermarket. You, you get stuff like that on all levels of the game, even at the highest of tiers when it comes to the English Premier League. I mean, this shouldn't be happening. Like the players' egos are higher than the clubs. Wait, was going to do 4-0. It's fine. That's a winning <laughs> mentality. That's going to be. It's back at Chelsea, and it's really wanting hey, that spirit. Cole Palmer to come back. is tied at the top of the scoring table with Erling Haaland. Cole Palmer has scored more goals in consecutive matches than Didier Drogba. Nobody in Chelsea has Nine scored Nine penalty goals this season. Hey, um, pen goals pen, goal. Pen Palmer. Uh, Cole's uh, Cole's goal. Uh, pen Palmer, first player in Chelsea since Eden Hazard to score over twenty goals. Uh, so shout out Eden Hazard. He's one of your own. He's one of their own. Um, but yeah, so that's one of the gaffes. Second gaff. Yeah, you sent me this. No, that's that's the goal. Oh, that's the goal. Yeah. Hey, we'll show it. That's, Why not? That's the goal I had. I mean, I thought it was a banger. Like, tu win the goal. Allá viene la pelota brava. Balón al frente. Siempre buscan a Charlene esta. That was a great goal. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> go shout out Charlene. Someone uh, let her know. <laughs> somebody please tell her. Uh, she the has second one. gap, you sent me this, and this was hilarious. God. It's like pain. <sighs> <sighs> like vato. <laughs> Viven en un country. <laughs> Viven en un country. Tiene un BMW. <laughs> Just, what are you doing? Just shoot the ball. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's ridiculous, man. I mean, technically the goalkeeper got in front of the line before he got a chance to kick the ball. Yeah, so. redo it. Yep, <laughs> gotta redo it. Done. Sorry. Uh, you gotta redo it. And I mean, for our great of the week, I had two. Oh, yeah? The first one, we have to give it to the Ranfury. First start this season for OC. And getting a clean sheet. Shout out to the Ranfury. Great. Oh, yeah? Xavi Alonso. Xavi Alonso. Shout like out. The beauty of soccer, right? Mm hmm. Xavi Alonso taking over Bayer Leverkusen in the German so uh, Soccer League, in the Bundesliga. Bayer Leverkusen have never won a Bundesliga title before. This was the first one. They were so much ahead. The, the game that Xavi Alonso has brought to Bayer Leverkusen has been insane. Uh, absolute scenes. I mean, just being a soccer fan, watching this, it hits home for you, right? You got to be like, damn. Like that's what it's all about. Like this is what it's, this is what it's supposed to be. 
imagine being a fan. Like, your team never wins because Bayern Munich just dominates for Borussia Dortmund. Look at that. Just absolute happiness. There's like, nothing. Dude, this is sick, man. How do you feel? <laughs> <laughs> the heroes. Welcome. That's where it's 20 year old uh, center attacking mid. It's a Patrick in this game. Uh, the president of Bayer Leverkusen already said, well, we have to sell one of our players so we can have a budget to bring in more players. So we're probably going to sell one of the players. You know when you have young players like this and they win a league, mm -hmm. you can sell them for triple their, their price. I think there's a player that Man United are already trying to get. And people, even Man United fans said, no, leave him alone. He looks so happy. <laughs> like, don't <laughs> sign anyone from that team, please. Uh, but you, you just shout out to Xavi Alonso. Staying another season, Leverkusen after. Running back. Love that. Um, speaking of internationals, the last thing, and we'll wrap this up for tonight, is um, coming up in the next couple of weeks, uh, Chiva and I, Chiva and you, you and me, you and me, I. Um, tu y yo, Isabu Mafu. Is that how it was in Spanish? Tu y yo, Isabu Mafu. Son animales como serán. Na, 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 na. Wow. No, um, it's not that guy. Me. And you and the Buma Um, we are gonna be interviewing uh two international players or one of them, former players. Um first is Real Betis legend because Tab Ramos. Tab Ramos. So Tab Ramos uh is gonna be representing Real Betis, who's gonna be facing at Snapdragon Stadium over in the summer a returning Manchester United. And so with that, uh, coming up in the next couple of weeks, we will be interviewing Tab Ramos from Real Betis and uh, former and uh, former current. He's not current. He is a Champions League winner. He is a league, uh, no. a Barclays Premier League winner. He is a formerly a Chelsea player of the year. Uh, he did some stuff in Man U. Uh, I guess is, good, is, is in good standings and now an ambassador for Manchester United. Uh, we're going to be interviewing Juan Mata. <laughs> and it is all because uh, Manchester United and Real Betis will be facing off in the summer here at Snapdragon. So that's going to be fun to watch. But yeah, Juan Mata. I mean, he's a player that is a legend in both your club and my that's club. Crazy. That's, like, so, that's so crazy. That's so crazy. I'm really excited for that. So stay tuned for, for that development and how that's going to go down. Um, it's ridiculous that we're getting to talk to Juan Mata. <laughs> like, it's honestly the, the craziest, dumbest thing ever. But I love it. I really want to. And those of you wondering who Tad Ramos, I mean, you can look it up. But I mean, playing Real Betis from 1992 to 1995. Uruguayo. Uruguayo. Uh, coached the Houston Dynamo for two years, then mm -hmm. Hartford Athletic for one season. Mm -hmm. uh, and then he was the SSN and New England Revolution. So, I mean, just insight on a MLS. Player that knows the game in and out, that played overseas. So that's going to be interesting as well. But that's pretty much what we have for you all tonight. Season's greetings for everybody who tuned in back on a Monday. We did back-to-back -back Tuesdays because of necessity. We're back on Monday night, dominating Monday night. San Diego's number one soccer outlet. San Diego Punto Football is the name of the game. San Diego Punto Football is the name of the website. You can find everything that we do on there. Find Abraham's articles, the latest, and anything soccer in San Diego. Uh, you'll find it there. Shout out to everybody who's supporting us. PB European Imports, San Diego Internacional, winning uh, four to zero, um, right? Yes. Fine. Sure. Uh, uh, four to zero. We're gonna go ahead and uh, cuatro uno. Cuatro uno. They won. What I? Uh, San Diego Soccer's are gonna be playing against uh, Chihuahua Savage, the revenge game. Literally the same thing as last year, where they got booted out by Chihuahua. Uh, they're gonna be having a home matchup. On the 21st, that is Sunday, Sunday the 21st. If you want tickets for that too, let me know. Uh, hit me up on San Diego Punto Football or underscore Tony Sanchez. Uh, with that said, season's greetings to everybody who's been listening, supporting San Diego Punto Football. I'll put Abraham on. <laughs> Forever. Bye. Bye, guys.